Welcome everyone, my name is Brendan Snyder. Thank you for joining me. It's with a very sad and heavy heart to announce the passing of a really great guitarist, Bob Kulik. Uh, he died Thursday, May 28th of 2020 at the age of 70, and he's probably best known for his studio work with Kiss, and also for being the older brother to former Kiss guitarist, Bruce Kulik. Um, Bob was a very in-demand session musician throughout his many years in the industry, and he played with some of the biggest names within the industry, but he was also a uh, Grammy Award winner of all things. So um, going back, um, he was born in Brooklyn, New York, and as I said, older brother to Bruce Kulik, and he decided to try his hand um, at play, you know, guitar in a audition for Kiss in 1972, but of course lost out to Ace Frehley, as we all know. Now the thing is, he still got a chance to perform with them, he performed uncredited on their albums uh, Live 2. He did the studio material that's on a Live 2. And then he also played on Unmasked from 1980 and uh, Killers from 1982. This had four new studio tracks at the time, as well as the collection. And then also 1982's Creatures of the Night. But as an accredited member, he did play on Paul Stanley's 1978 solo album, so he is officially within the KISS canon there, having played on that solo album. And of course, KISS has since acknowledged him in these uncredited roles on those albums. Um, he did play for Wasp as well uh, on their albums, two of their albums, not as a band member, but on the albums. He was on uh, 1992's The Crimson Idol. And then my favorite of the Wasp albums, Still Not Black Enough from 1996. I think this is a really highly underrated a Wasp album and definitely within the um, Bob Kulik world. Really, really good stuff. Uh, do check that out. And his discography of session work that he did over the years includes a lot of great artists. Uh, he did um, Lou Reed's Coney Island Baby in 1975. He played on Diana Ross's album Why Do Fools Fall in Love from 1981. Michael Bolton's self-titled release in 1983. And remember, Michael Bolton was not the crooner that we know him as today. He was a hard rock and even metal vocalist uh, early on on those first two records. And then um, he played on uh, Meatloaf's album from 1984, Bad Attitude. And this is my favorite of all of the Meatloaf albums. It's a really great straight ahead rock album that's just, uh, in my opinion, beats anything else that he ever did. So do check that out as well. And um, former Warlock vocalist, Doro, he played on her album, Calling the Wild in 2000. And then um, he played on uh, Tim Ripper Owens, former Judas Priest vocalist, who's just a powerhouse singer, um, his 2010 solo album uh, on, on there. And so out of all of those albums and sessions that he played on and everything, he earned 11 gold and platinum albums through the years, which is really impressive for having just been a session musician. But he also played um, or formed his own bands and, and had those. And in 1981, he had a group called Balance that had a top 20 billboard hit with the song Breaking Away. And then in 1991, he formed a group called Skull. And this is actually what we're listening to in the background here, uh, which featured Bobby Rock on drums, who was also from uh, the much more popular group, Nelson. Um, and then in 1993, he formed a super group called Blackthorn. This is the second of their two records, the first one being Afterlife. But this one had former Rainbow and Alcatraz vocalist Graham Bonnet, who does an amazing job on this, and also former Alcatraz um, keyboardist Jimmy Waldo, as well as two former Quiet Riot members, Frankie Banali on drums and Chuck Wright on bass. And then in 1996, he formed another group called Murderer's Row, which featured uh, former Jufria vocalist David Glenn Isley. And remember, uh, Jufria was uh, Greg Jufria, the keyboardist from Angel. It was his band after that. And then later, Jufria developed into House of Lords with a different uh, singer, James Christensen. Um, and in 2017, he finally released his own solo record, which is called Skeletons in the Closet. It has a lot of really great uh, musicians on it, including some really cool vocalists. Dee Snyder of Twisted Sister sings on it. Robin McCauley from MSG. Andrew Freeman of Last in Line and Hurricane. Uh, David Glenn Isley from uh, Jufria, as I just mentioned. 
and Dennis St. James, a skull, which again is who we're listening to. And he was also a very accomplished producer, having done a lot of work with the Purple Pyramid label and the other labels doing the tribute albums and things of that nature, where he usually would gather up some really famous musicians to uh, pay tribute to particular musical artists, a lot in the prog world and stuff. Um, but in uh, 2004, he won the Grammy for Best Metal Performance, having produced the Motorhead song Whiplash. Incidentally, it's actually a cover of the Metallica song, um, but he did win the Grammy for that, which is um, you know, quite amazing. And then I, I really found this last point to be pretty interesting here. He even wrote um, music that appeared in an episode of Nickelodeon's SpongeBob SquarePants. So Bob Kulik was much more than just the session musician that he might get sometimes pigeonholed as, having appeared on numerous Kiss albums and a lot of really famous um, other musicians as their session player, but then he did have bands in his own right and stuff. And if you're not familiar with any of those, do check them out. I highly recommend Meatloaf's Bad Outta Hell, um, the band that he had, Skull, or, um, the supergroup that he was in, Blackthorn. And certainly we're gonna miss uh, Bob Kulik and the music that he did, but it's gonna live on in our hearts and uh, in our minds as well. All right, rest in peace, Bob Kulik, and uh, everyone take care and have a great day. Bye-bye.